it's Amy from Chat Cakes Decor and welcome to today's tutorial on how to make a Cymbidium Orchid like a pro. I've also broken this video down into easy parts for you to follow along with but before we begin please print out that materials list attached to this video. Let's get into it. This is part one of the Cymbidium Orchid and we will be making the pistil and the throat. So we're going to be using our mint fondant or gum paste and some pale yellow fondant or gum paste. First thing we want to do is make the pistil. I'm going to take a small amount of gum paste or fondant. If you're using fondant, and adding your own tylose to it. We're going to take a small amount. So I only use fondant and tylose in small amounts so that it doesn't get hard and dry up because it gets too hard to work with it. It gets too firm. So we're going to put a little sprinkle of tylose onto that one and give it a knead in. If you're in a high humidity or high moisture content in the air area, in wherever in the world you are, use more tylose. And this technique of only mixing what you need at that time will help you use it in relative ease because I find if you start to mix large quantities up, it hardens up and it gets too firm to use. So we're going to just keep our cornflower pouch on the side here. Just if our fingers start to stick, always use cornflour and not icing sugar because icing sugar is absorbed into the fondant and it makes it dry out and crack a lot quicker. So making the pistol, we're going to pinch off a small marble size amount of fondant. We're going to roll it and then shape it into a sausage. We're going to use our forefinger and our thumbs on both sides and pinch so that you create a little diamond shape in the middle and two little wings on either side and then break it off at the two centimeter mark. Now you can do this in two different ways. My easiest way is to use a five, a number five Wilton tip using the um, smaller, small circle shape at the top to go from the underneath side and imprint a small circle. The other way to do this is by rolling two very small balls and attaching them to the very end. Depending, depending on what kind of look you want, I would probably go with this, this option, just because it's relatively easy and quick to do. However, sometimes if I'm doing a fully painted one and I can spend hours on it, I will go into further depth and put two tiny little buds on the end. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So we've inserted our 22 gauge wire into our pistol with a little bit of edible gum. And I'm just thinning out the pistol and tapering it to the wire and tidying it up. Now that it's tapered, I'm going to bend it slightly forwards and then I'm going to just bring those little wings up. So that's your end result. Put it into your foam block and set it aside and let it dry. Now part two, this is your other option for a pistol, so we'll call this pistol two. So we're going to do the same thing again, roll out a little sausage, but we're going to put the sausage aside. These little balls that will go on the end will be quite small, depending on how big your pestle or how fat your pestle is. 
So just putting some corn flour on my fingers so that it doesn't stick. I'm going to just widen the edge a little bit, pinch, pinch the sides and then I'll just pinch the excess off. I'll take my 22 gauge wire, wipe off any excess and insert it, oops, insert it about halfway and then start to tape, taper or twirl or thin the base down so it's got good contact with the wire and any excess I just use my nail to put a cut through and then I pinch it off. Okay, so I still imprint my little circle in the top or in the tip from the bottom upwards but this time I'm going to use a very small amount of glue and when I say very I mean hardly any and just touch the very tip. If you've got too much glue on it it's not going to stick it or fall off. And you can either do this with tweezers or with your fingers. Just gently add the two little balls to the very end. And then using your fingers like we did to pinch the wings out, push them together so that they smoosh up a little bit better. I'm widening my wings out very, very slightly. And now I'm going to bring my wings down. And at the same time, I've bent my pistol forwards. And that's your pistol. Place it in your foam block and set it aside. Now we're going to move on to part two, which are the petals. So the first petal we're going to work with are our wing petals, and there's two of these petals. This is the cutter, so this is our other petal. This was our throat. This is the skinny petal, we're gonna put that aside, and these are our two front wing petals. So we're going to roll our fondant or our gum paste out to about a, a millimetre and a half thickness to two mil. The reason why we want it so thick is because we're going to put a wire into this, but I don't use a cell board. So you're welcome to use a cell board if that's what you feel comfortable with, but my technique doesn't work with the cell board. So I just prefer to do it this way. Again, do whatever you feel comfortable with. So I'm only working at the moment with one petal at a time because my gum paste is starting to get firm. So I won't have enough time to shape and mold both at the same time. Now we're going to use the technique that I prefer and I will put corn flour on my forefingers and my thumb and I'm going to widen and thin this petal at the same time. So starting from the base of the petal, I'm gonna start about a centimeter up I'm going to pinch or use a rolling action and thin and widen this petal, making sure that I don't mess up the point at the end. And then I'm going to come back down. So you can do this with moderate pressure to get the thickness that you'd prefer. Once that's done, I'm going to insert a 24 gauge wire into that bottom piece about half a centimetre in and I'll make sure that it's a nice firm pinch at the bottom and taper that to the wire. The reason why you want to make sure that it's done properly and spend a little bit more time on it because once it's dried if it doesn't have once the wire has not got good contact with the fondant and it's dried and you go to assemble it this petal is going to be rotating and spinning around on that wire and once it does that it's really hard to come back from it's almost better just to make a new petal so this is my petal and this is my veiner that came with my, my kit. So I'm going to place my petal in my veiner and put the lid on it. But because I've got wire in this section here at the back, I'm only going to push down with force on the front and the middle. And then I'll slight pressure down the end. 
and this will give me a cut veined petal. Now to dry this petal, I will bring out my spoons and I will place it in my spoon so that the cup is facing upwards, which is the front of my petal. And I'm going to let that dry overnight for 24 hours. But just in case you've missed something, I'm going to make the second petal so that you can see what I've done again. I'm rolling the fondant out to a mil and a half to two mil thick. I'm cutting my petal. Now I'm going to widen it. I use my forefinger and my thumb with corn flour on it. I start from the bottom of the petal a centimetre from the tip and I will use a pinching or rolling action to widen and thin those edges at the same time. Just taking care to keep that tip there. And then I'll come back. Now that that's nice and thin, I'll add my 24 gauge wire, a tiny little bit of glue and insert it half a centimetre in and taper the bottom. Pinch it so it's nice and nice and pretty. I'll put it in my mould but I'll only put forceful pressure on the top and the half and then just a little push towards the end and stick it in my cup holder or my cup my spoon holder and dry it so that it cups the petal and that's the front facing towards. Now we're going to move on to the triangle petals. I have a golf ball size piece of fondant. I'm actually going to add some tylos to this because I haven't yet. I'm going to add about a quarter of a teaspoon. If you're in a high humidity or somewhere that has a lot of moisture in the air, add extra. And only work with what you need at that time because it will get hard and firm and you won't be able to get nice veining um, and it's just easier. It's, it's easier on your joints and your fingers to use it as you need it. Okay, so we're going to follow the same principle we did with the first two petals. We're going to roll this out to a millimetre and a half thick. We're going to roll this out to a millimetre and a half thick. But this time we're going to take the long thin cutter. We're going to cut three petals. So one will be the top triangle point and the other two will be the base of the triangle. Because your flower, you'll have the throat in the middle, you'll have the two wing petals at the front, but behind them you'll have one triangle point petal and then the two lower triangle petals, which cause a triangle. So in case you're wondering what I'm talking about when I say triangle, that's what it is. I'm going to follow the same thing, uh, the same technique I did with the first lot of petals. Starting a centimetre from the base, I'm going to widen these slightly. Not too much, just so they're somewhat uniform. Okay, once that's done, we'll add our 24 gauge wire, insert it half a centimetre in at the base and taper it off, put it aside. Now depending on how quickly you can work, you can do all three of these at once. But if it does take you a little while and you want to spend a few hours on perfecting your technique or even changing the way it's done, do one petal at a time. Next, we need to vein them. So 
Again, we're going to place this right at the top so the tip is at the very top. And we're only going to push down to the, the front half and then lightly on the base just to put a little bit of veining in. So we're going to make these petals so that they cup forwards. And we're going to dry them just as normal. But the top, the very, very top triangle petal, I like to push up in my, in my spoon and try to get a little bit more of a prolific curl where I'll just tease the tip down very slightly. Now moving on to the two bottom. Again, I'm only pushing the top half. Now we're going to save it in the spoon. And I don't do anything special here. I just put them in the spoons and let them dry in a natural curve. And they will be our bottom triangle petals. I'll put them aside and let them dry for 24 hours before I move on. going to make some buds and we will need three of our 20 gauge bits of wire and our needle nose pliers and we're going to grab our pliers well our wire about three millimeters from the top and we're going to bend and curl that wire around so that it makes a D with a little loop on the end of it. I'll show you again. So we need to separate three little balls of fondant or gum paste. One large, one small, one medium. And we're going to roll these into a teardrop shape. It almost looks like a garlic clove. So, flat down the bottom, then at the top. I'll add my wire. By adding some glue and inserting it halfway through and then just pinching the base and tapering it so that that bottom of the teardrop is kept in a nice uniform shape. Once that's done, I'll take my craft knife, the back of it, not the front, and I will press it into my fondant with my, my pointed finger is actually, um, my pointed finger is actually supporting the tip and I will push my knife in, drag it up and then press it in to the tip. Now I will do three of these. And then I'll just fix the tip up, make sure that it's nice and uniform. And I'll put that aside into my foam and let it dry. Continue this for the next two. Fix up the tip and place it in the foam to dry. 
last one, which is usually the smallest one. Insert your wire, taper the tip, make sure that your teardrop slash garlic clove looking bud is adhered properly and then imprint three lines to give it the indication that you've got three petals. and dry. Now we're going to dust our buds. So taking some of your moss green, we're going to start from the bottom of our buds and drag that colour up about halfway to three quarters of the tip. Some sides will be darker, some sides will be lighter. It's not a big deal. Once you've got the colour on there, we're going to add a tiny little bit of pink to the top. Just by dusting it, letting the brush, the weight of the brush and the residual colour that's on that brush already do all the work. If you find that there's just not enough, Put a tiny bit more on there, usually use the lid. And then brush it down. Very lightly. And continue on through for the rest of them. Now on this particular one I'm doing, I'm brushing the green from the base and I'm dragging it to the tip lifting my pressure. And I'm following the lines that I've imprinted into the fondant. With the pink, I'm coming from the tip but I'm coming I'm going to push the pink onto the tip but then I'm going to drag it down between those lines, so on that solid panel and it's very faint. I don't want too much because if your green and your pink mix, you'll get an ugly color. And continue on. Okay, now that we've coloured all our buds, we'll put them aside, getting ready for assembly. So we're going to colour our throat now for the Cymbidium Orchid. I'm going to start with a marker because this is going to be a pink and mint green. I'm going to do a little line on the wing, very edge of that wing on that pistol. Absolutely tiny amount, nothing more than that. And I'll start from the side and I'll come up as much as possible. I'll leave the center bare, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Now on the bottom lip of your throat, this is almost a centre line and I will draw a couple of tiny little dots, almost like a little centre line and then there'll be a couple of bigger, bigger dots towards the edge and then I'll sort of fan out a few tiny little dots but not too many. Now I'm going to blur these little dots with some water and a paintbrush. 
So I've got the brush that I used for my edible glue, but I've just washed it in some water and I'm wiping off as much excess as possible. And then I'll come down the middle and I'm just, just dotting because I don't want to mix too much pink in around everything. I just want to blur these dots slightly so that when we put the pink petal dust on, they'll stand out, but they won't look so drawn on. They kind of look a little bit more natural. It's important not to have too much water at this stage. So now that you've done that, put it aside and let it dry and we'll move on to the next section. So now that our throat is dry enough to dust, we're going to take our pink and our yellow colours. Now starting with the yellow, we don't want too much yellow on this one. Can I just put the handle back on my paintbrush? So I won't load my paintbrush up, I'll take off any excess. But what I want to do is I want to put some very faint yellow colouring where the tongue is. So I want to come down opposite that runway almost, that line in the middle that we did with the pink. I want to sort of take it from inside and bring it down, lightening it as it comes down the bottom. And then I'll just sort of pat it to widen it out a tiny bit. But then in the middle where the tongue is, I'll add extra colour so that it pops. Moving on to the pink, I'm going to add some dusting pink to the edges. So I'll move from the outer edge towards the middle, giving it a flicking motion because I don't want to color the whole centerpiece in, in, in pink. I want to leave some of that with um, mint green. But I don't want it dark too dark because I still want those darker spots to show through. So I'm using a little bit of a, a rolling motion here just to get those, those little frills filled in. Okay, so now that I've got the bottom dusted as much as I want, I want those top two wings to have a slight blush on them. So I will just go from the top on a little bit on the edge and bring brush down just so that there's a tiny little bit of pink on that petal edge and then bring it down. And I'll put that aside. I'll do another one just to show. Putting some yellow on that tongue and bringing it down on either side of that runway. Taking some pink and blushing up the bottom of this throat. Now I should let you guys know that I'm holding on to the fondant, not the wire because I don't want to move the wire so much that I break it. Now we're going to assemble the Cymbidium Orchid. We're going to take our throat. We're going to take our top petal, which curls facewards. Our two bottom triangle petals which will be curling under and our two wing petals which will be curling upwards. So taking our floral tape we're going to start with our throat 
And we're going to take the tape and wind it from about the bottom or halfway. And we're going to pull it tight and twist or twirl it until we get to the base of the throat. And you need to be very careful that we don't break our throat. Taking our wing petals, we're going to hold on to the end or the very tip where the wire comes out between our forefinger and our thumb. Hold on to the gum paste and just gently bend that wire back so that your petal has got a, a, a bend in it and it's cupping so that it will cup up towards you. Now that those two wing petals are bent, we're going to position them where our throat is. So I will bring these two petals up, depending on how long your throat is. I want these petals to sit quite close. So I've had to bring this wire up about half a centimetre up the throat or from the base of the throat and I'll wire that there. Make sure it's nice and secure and then put the other petal on the other side in the same spot. Again wire it tight. Give it a nice tight tape and then bring your tape down so it sets a good foundation for the rest of the petals to stick. Now we're going to move on to our top petal. Now the top petal should be curling upwards as well, the same way as the wing petals. I will put a bend in this petal and I will move it back half a centimetre away from the and secure on the top between the wing petals. Now we're going to do the same for our bottom petals, but these petals don't cut upwards, they cut downwards. So I'm holding on to the tip, I'm bending the wire down at a 90 degree angle. And now I'm going to add these, and now I'm going to add these to the bottom underneath my throat. So add your tape first. Your first petal, which will be, if you're right handed, should be the left. It's going to sit at the same, roughly the same height as your wing petals. Where the base of the wing petals are. And secure it nice and tight. And then put your other petal on in the same location and secure. Now I will cut off the extra wire and run my tape down over that exposed wire and then double it back again so that when this goes into a cake or if it gets wired in those exposed wires don't cause a problem. Is your Cymbidium Orchid? Um, I quite like doing a lighter mint with a white throat and I will completely dust the throat. Um, another really good one, I've done pink, I've done white but mint is my favourite because it seems to stand out more. But just take a photo, place it in front of you of something that you like and just lay, layer your dusting colours on to get the colour that you want. And always, always make more petals and an extra throat or two in case you break one because I guarantee you even the most professional of us will break a petal or something goes wrong and it won't secure properly. There's the first Symbidium. So make more of these 
and I'll show you how to assemble them into a spray. So take a long piece of floral tape. I start with the bud and I choose my best flower, which might be this one. She's my best. So I'll choose my best flower. I'll hold my finger and my thumb behind the wire and I'll put a bend in that wire so that when I attach it to the main stem, it'll attach and leave a gap so that I can maneuver that flower. It also stops your petals from breaking. So I actually am going to put the bend side on so that when I put my flower in, it will sit like this. So everybody wires their flowers differently, but I like to keep the rule of thumb that the tip or your little bit of um, buds don't overhang too much. I like to sort of have a semicircle. So if this was in a circle, the buds would be sitting within that circle and it would sort of start from the flower and it will curve around. Now it's not going to be perfect, but they're roughly on that circle. That tip overhangs slightly, but I actually don't mind that. So that looks really nice. I'll wire those two stems, to, sorry, I won't wire, I'll tape those two stems together and create a main stem. Go all the way down. And that's what it will look like. My next flower will sit off, off the side. So again, I'll hold the stem and I'll bend it to the angle that I want it to be bent. And I'm going to put this flower here, just off center to the other one. So it's important as you go along that you don't add all the flowers together, you add one at a time because then you can maneuver the flowers to sit against each other. So you can see that there's very minimal space there. I will tape them two together. bud to sit quite high up. So I'm just eyeballing from the main stem how far up this bud's going to sit and I think I've worked it out. I've just eyeballed it, put it on the main stem and I can see that continuing on that semicircle he sits a little bit higher which is good. So that's what I'm going to do with him. All my flowers are girls or hymns, just depends. Usually my buds are boys and my flowers are girls. I don't know, it's just what I say. So now that I've taped that together, I'll bend this wire slightly so that it sits more upright. Okay, at this point, I'll add another one. Usually I'll add a bud and or a semi-open flower, which is basically one of these, but without the centerpiece and I'll just close without this throat and I'll just close all those buds together and I'll put it off center. But this particular spray, I think I need at least one more flower. I will choose this one. So I want this flower to come down a little bit closer to the main stem because now our semicircle is starting to come to full circle. So we've got the start 
and then it reaches up, hits that height, and then we want to bring it back down again. Back down. So I'll just tape this to the main stem. Now if you need to extend your stem, get some 22 or 20 gauge wire, add it to that stem, maybe two or three lengths, and tape it to that main stem, and you'll be able to then add more flowers to your main stem. But this particular stem I'm not adding any more than I need to. And this particular flower I'm just going to make sure that all the petals are sitting the way I want them to sit. At this point if you find that you've got cornflower or extra dust, take a spare dusting brush or paintbrush and it's just got to be a soft one and just lightly dust off any cornflower that you see. Now, if you're doing a different colour and you want your colour to pop, you can use a steaming kettle, which is specifically designed for cake decorators. Or if you don't, you can just use your kettle. Get the kettle boiling, wait till the steam is coming out of the top quite a lot. And then hold your kettle is here. Hold your flowers quite far above and twist and turn them until they all have a nice even layer of like a sheen over the top of it. And that will make your color set and it will make it pop. So it'll darken it. So that is as far as I'm going with that, that set, but you can continue to add more. Just remember, when you're adding flowers to a cake, you need a very long stem, and I will never put more than three flowers to a stem, and I will add them one stem at a time, building up that stem length so that the weight of the cake, the weight of your stem doesn't pull down the weight of your cake. So just remember only limit yourself to a few flowers per stem. You can always insert another stem quite close to this that makes it look like it's branching off, but never in one full stem because the cake will often tear and you'll have catastrophes. So that concludes today's tutorial.